It's a pet's life with Jim Dog, Ireland's first pet resort by Des the Vet. Managed by vets, loved by pets. Daycare, vet care, premium pet food and grooming. Visit at petslife.ie. And a very good morning to you and a very good morning to uh, Des. How you doing, Des? Yeah, good, John. Great to be here again. Good to have you back as well, ready to go. And we got through uh, Halloween. Seems to be okay. How did your place go? Did you have any issues or problems? I find no issues. No okay. hassle. Yeah. All of the messages are getting through, I think. There you go. Isn't that yeah. a, that's a good sign yeah. as well. Before we get into the nitty gritty, I know you're a rugby hound, so you're looking forward to the All Blacks the weekend? Looking forward to Friday, Friday night's night. big game. Looking forward to seeing a few, a few of the younger players hopefully get a run out. Yeah. I think it'll be a really close game. I think some of our key star older players are not in form. Mm. And you have younger lads there with a, a way to go still. I'm thinking of the 10 and I'm thinking of the cover for 10. Guys with a bit to do yet. For for that level, you know, and the All Blacks mm. are never easy to beat. No, but to be a hell of a game, I'm looking forward to it. You're going to it as well, are you? I'm going to it as well. Fair juice, fair juice. You've sourced a couple of tickets for yourself. And <laughs> um, right, let's turn our attentions to uh, matters at hand. Far side of the uh, the week that was with Halloween, and everything else, as you were saying, there was no issues. Thank goodness for that. People obviously got the message and kept their animals in. I didn't hear of anything, but it, I didn't hear of anything going wrong kind of regarding issues anyway so that's all a good sign people may be just adhering to all the good advice that's being got uh, but one animal that always seems to be in the hiding when it comes around Halloween the far side of Halloween are cats they always seem to struggle uh, generally don't they? They, they? they don't like change they don't like noise and excitement and that type of thing they're solitary uh, little creatures um, they prefer to be outside and live outside so um, cats would struggle around Halloween time keep away from people I think they do to be yeah. honest yeah. yeah but the only thing is not like dogs will have a habit of when they escape because of the, the noise and the bangers and all the fireworks and stuff the dogs have a habit of going missing where cats will kind of just hide away till it's all over uh, yeah they'll hide back. away till it's all over till it's all I'll tell you a funny story a cat turned up a week or two ago in the yard and hung about the surgery and wasn't afraid of people wasn't afraid of dogs and uh, wanted, yeah, little black cat and uh, very friendly and lo and behold it had a microchip and we were able to find the owners the owners were uh, living near Kildare Town railway station a uh, busy road, busy area but only a mile from the surgery and it turns out the cat had been missing for over two months yeah, turned up a mile away Wow. Yeah. Well, and what, what type of nick was he in? Good condition. A few people had been feeding him yeah. and he'd been hunting. Yeah. They're, they're closer to the wild than, than dogs and they fend for themselves. They can hunt, they can survive and yeah. they can find, who, find, find food. The owners were delighted to have their cat back. Of course they were. Had been missing two months. Yeah. So it showed the benefits of a microchip. Yeah, that's exactly it. The microchip is important and you can get them any time of the year yeah. and you just go down and they, they zap you and away you go and that's it. Just yeah, behind we, the neck is where you We neutered a stray cat this morning first thing for, for um, pe- people in Kildare and we have the neutering discount. We were doing the neutering at half price between now and the end of the year. And when he was asleep for his neutering, we were able to put the microchip in. Yeah. So that's another cat identified and trackable for life. Okay. And that's the, that's the key thing. Just get the, get the microchip in while yeah. you're getting the neutering done mm-hmm. or if they're out uh, uh, anesthetically as well. Uh, okay, let's uh, speaking of cats, we're on to cats. We're going to be talking about cats, diseases, common ailments, common diseases within cats. Give me an example. Yeah, I'm going to talk about a couple of zoonotic diseases first. Zoonotic diseases mean bugs that can spread between species, i.e. from a cat to a person. And what's been on my mind recently because we had a member of staff went off on maternity leave and in the build-up to that we had to think about health and safety and we had to manage that that, that lady's transition in work and working Mm. with animals and all the rest of it. So the hazards of working with animals while pregnant or the hazards of having a pet while pregnant. So the first thing, top of the list, that everybody's worried about and that GPs and health professionals always warn pregnant ladies about, um, toxoplasmosis, which is a type of a parasite or a protozoa that cats commonly carry. Um, And it can be harmful because it can cause birth defects during pregnancy. Yeah, oh yes, it's very serious. Very, very serious, potentially a very serious infection for um, um, a pregnant lady to be exposed to. Right, okay. But the good news is that everybody knows about it and these sort of risks are very manageable. Mm. So toxoplasma is a disease that cats get from a parasite, usually when their kittens are in their early life and they get these cat flu-like symptoms and and they're sick for a while. Is it a case that when they get them, when they are kittens, they're dormant and then they are reactivated? Yeah, the problem with it is that they, they, they can reshed 
uh, these these spores or oocytes as they're called they can reshed these spores at different times in their lives and they'll shed it through their feces okay so that means that um during pregnancy women have to be very careful handling cats particularly handling litter trays or anything to do with where the cat does his business in the garden sandbox in the garden boxes in the garden yeah. are a hazard uh, flower beds anywhere around the garden like that if you have an outdoor cat would be a hazard for pregnant ladies and litter trays in the house indoors must be handled with gloves on okay now as i say during pregnancy doctors will will will, we'll, we'll we'll mention talk that about, about animals that. anyway ah, yes yeah. absolutely so i'm just mentioning it again because um, a couple of things about it for cat owners when cats or kittens get sick like that and they have little flus don't ignore it because there are a number of different bugs that have flu-like symptoms mm. and some of these as I say can be zoonotic now if you have a kitten or a young cat that's sick it could be toxoplasma so do bring it to the vet do get it treated so that that cat can be treated and the elimination or the shedding of that toxoplasma is minimised then for the rest of that cat's life that makes sense as so well. that's very important that's toxoplasma that's the first important zoonosis. It is treatable in cats with four weeks of an antibiotics, but they do shed it intermittently. So, as I say, handling of the feces, handling of the litter trays, very important. Wear gloves. And please, especially, don't have the cats in the bedroom or on the, bre- on the beds during pregnancy, that mm-hmm. sort of thing. OK, so that'll be important. That's one zoonosis. Another zoonosis, very common and less harmful, less risky, but nonetheless inconvenient and upsetting for people, ringworm. We've all heard of ringworm. Yes. So ringworm is a nasty type of a fungal skin infection, a bit like athlete's foot. And cats get it. And it's a zoonosis zoonosis because it spreads among different species. It's a fungus, is it? It's It's a fungus. Now, years ago when I was doing a lot of horse work, there was a very common transmission or a crossover between cats in the stable yards and horses getting ringworm. And the cats would pass it to the horses and the horses would pass it back to the cats. And some stable yards in particular would be always plagued with this this ringworm. And there's a topical treatment for it that would have to be used on the horses and on the cats and even indeed on dogs. And occasionally, as it can happen, if you have cats indoors... Or you take it can in, go to humans. It can go to humans. Yeah. So people taking in kittens, as I say, very important, have these kittens checked out by the vets because typically litters of kind of half wild or yard cats, yard kittens, these often have ringworm. Mm. And they will transmit it. Children will catch it. Adults will catch it. Where you'll get it is on the sen- sensitive skin of your neck, your wrists, the inside of your arms. Uh, and for children, they'll get it in their ankles and their lower legs. Mm. from contact with kittens. The treatment for it is uh, a couple of toxic remedies, to- topical remedies, Maliseb and Imavrol applied to the spot. Okay. And I have also often found that the ear ointments, the ear remedies that we use for otitis, ear infections in dogs and cats, these are also effective topically on the spot for ringworm. Okay. But, as I say, you do need to treat it vigorously in the young kittens for a period of about 10 days to two weeks because it can very often trans- transfer to the adults in the house or get on the furniture and it can be a devil then to eliminate it from the house. Okay, you know when you, you give your cats or your dogs the spot on stuff? Yeah. Does that help you not does that help the animals not get ringworm? No, unfortunately not. It's a different one, is it? It is. It's a different one. And, and ringworm is really difficult to, to, to prevent. You can only treat it if it crops up. It's very hard to prevent them getting it. Okay, so, so there's no had, preventative measures. No, such. not really. For instance, if you if you had cats in contact with livestock, uh, horses, cattle, sheep, the risk of them catching it is still there. Okay, but what's the, what's the symptoms then? Uh, hair loss. Right. Um, they get these patches. Yeah. And uh, these patches look scurfy or dandruffy. Mm. Um, you'll see the type of scaly, scabby um, lesions. Yeah. Uh, typically around the nose, eyes, ears, uh, under the chin particularly in kittens, and paws. Right, OK. Um, we have an ultraviolet lamp called a Woods lamp. And how we can diagnose ringworm is the fungal spores, uh, they glow under mm. a, they glow green under an ultra, ultraviolet light. So you bring your kitten to the vets like that, they'll turn the light off, they'll take out the little Woods lamp, they'll shine it all over the kitten's body, and they'll look for little g- glowy green patches okay. on the kitten's skin as an indicator that these little fungal spores of ringworm are present. 
Okay. That, yeah. that's, that's it. The Woods lamp diagnosis. And, and then you just give them the medic- relevant medication. Then you after. use the topical medication. In rare cases, there's an oral medication, which is quite expensive, that you can use. But generally, the topical medications that you just apply to the lesions, generally, the topical medications are effective. Yeah. How uncomfortable is that for the cats themselves when they have it? Yeah, they often itch and scratch with it. They yeah. don't like it. Um, a good part of the remedy, part of the management of it is to chuck them outside into the fresh air. Yeah. Um, ringworm spores in common with lots of fungal spores they like heat they like moisture they like being indoors mm. they like the warmth of the house whereas if you chuck the kittens out chuck the cats out have them out in the fresh air that facilitates or helps the, the treatment and it, it facilitates and helps the, the death of the spores on okay. the skin Right, Jilly was on she says uh, yes and just loving the, the, the discussion you're having guys her cat Millie was two, three years old at this stage uh, she was di- diagnosed with early on sought diabetes by uh, our vet even though she eats quite well we give her nuts we give her cat food and we give her a little bit of bits off the plate from time to time I was just wondering why would she be on getting diabetes if she doesn't necessarily look dramatically overweight. Yeah, so cats... That sounds a bit young as well, isn't it? It is a bit With young, three. but it's the, it's the age it crops up. Now, here's the funny thing about diabetes in cats, and the same thing applies in dogs. They don't get the type 2 diabetes. Mm. Now, the type 2 diabetes, and as a fellow says, I'm not a human doctor, yeah. so I'm not 100% familiar with it, but the type 2 diabetes is the acquired form that people get from lifestyle factors. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Whereas type 1 is the inherited form. Yes. Right. Now, cats and dogs don't get type 2. So, being overweight, being unfit, having a bad lifestyle, all that kind of stuff that doctors warn you and I about in terms of eating better and not too much sugar and making sure our blood glucose is low and preventing acquired or type 2 diabetes. That's all the stuff that you and I worry about yeah. as we get older, John, right? But that doesn't apply to dogs and cats. They don't get that lifestyle diabetes. Mm. So... It's not your fault, listeners. There's nothing you could have done to prevent this. Right. Dogs and cats, 99%, they get type 1. That means it's congenital, it's genetic, it's in the genes. They're going to get it anyway, nearly regardless of what you do. Okay. So wh- what type of medication or treatment do you put them on? Uh, there's, it's very similar to the treatment for human, uh, human diabetes. Um, there's two forms. There's the injectable insulin. And now there's a new remedy, which is a which is a, which is a syrup, an insulin syrup. So they're on medication for life, just as people are. So that's the bad news. You have a patient, as it were, you have a diabetic patient for life, and you have to manage your own lifestyle and your own routine to be able to give your cat uh, the insulin medication for the rest of its life. Okay, but. It's very treatable, it's very manageable, it's very controllable controllable, and it's generally not life limiting and it generally doesn't shorten their lifespan, providing you can commit yourself to the uh, financial commitment and the time commitment of giving the medication all the time. Okay, so here's another one for you as well, another question you have coming in too, but just from my own perspective as well. Um, I noticed that when I was doing, you were asking, we were saying we're going to cover okay, common diseases and common common ailments and stuff like that within cats. Worms, as in just worms, worms, yeah. seems to come up as a pretty much a regular thing. Is that seasonal? Is that all year round? That's all year round. And right. every kitten and every puppy that comes into me has worms. Right. Why um, is that initially? Um, because they're incredibly resilient, the different parasites that are out there, and they're in the placenta. They make their way into the placenta, or the eggs of them make their way into the placenta before the kittens and puppies are even born Mm. so that they have worm eggs the minute they're born. Okay. It's like the worms have their own genetic inbuilt survival policy of making sure that they're on the job. Is that cats and dogs? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. They're on the job and they're present and they're in the fetus from the word go. Okay. As an inescapable. But a lot of people would have I mean, I know next door to us there was a, a litter of pups. They were twenty scanning, and I was talking to the the the, the neighbour, and he was saying, "Yeah, my dog is expecting three pups, and yeah. ten, ten arrived." Lovely, uh, which um, is a story in itself, really. But I was just curious. The chances are all those would probably have worms. Yeah, so we deworm the pregnant bitches and the pregnant queens. Dogs or cats are dewormed when they're pregnant. Usually, do them about midterm. Okay, and. And that helps in terms of helping to make sure that the puppies or kittens don't have too many worms. 
But then we begin deworming kittens at four weeks of age. Right. We give them a little soap, a little dose of a medication called Parazole, which is a gentle dewormer. Mm. You give every kitten or every puppy its first dose at four weeks. Right. Do the mums get the, get it from the kittens then afterwards? No? Uh, yes, they, yes, they do. Eat, reinfect each other. That's the point of making it. They can, they can reinfect each other. Yes, so indeed. that means if, if a litter is, is born or they have, the cat has a litter, subsequently you could get the... the 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 medication yeah. for the mum as well. You do. You yeah. treat the mum as well because the way they clean up their puppies or clean up their kittens uh, via licking the back end and all the rest of it means that they're going to constantly be exposing themselves to uh, the eggs that are shed um, out the back, as it were. Yeah. Through the faeces. Okay. What other type of uh, ailments are there out there or common cat diseases? Kidney disease, would you believe? Yes, we covered really this common before. in cats. And the reason why is because cats eat, and they're, cats are carnivores. Yeah. They have a high fat diet. Cat food is up to 40% fat mm. um, and 30% protein. So it's extremely rich. And that means it's extremely hard on the kidneys. And so a cat's kidneys work very hard throughout yeah. their lives to manage digestion and manage excretion of the waste products, which means that by the time cats get to a certain age, their, their kidneys are very tired yeah. and the risk of kidney disease then is very high. Right, OK, fair enough. Mark was on. He said, uh, uh, we had some kittens quite recently over the last three or four months in the early stages. The young kittens had gunky-type eyes and sneezing. We were told it could possibly be cat flu. Yeah, that's really common as well. There right. are three types of cat flu. Now, cat f- Flu is a sort of a misnomer in the sense that we call it cat flu, but the, really. inf- the influenza part of it is small. There's a herpes virus, a caliche virus, um, and an enteritis virus. The- these are three, and they cause flu-like symptoms. Um, and generally, we vaccinate kittens between 8 and 12 weeks. Okay. We give them a 3-in-1 vaccine, okay. and that covers them against those three. Okay. But they'll often have a touch of it in very early infancy. And, and will they get through? Will they fight it away? Yeah. If they're with their mother, they're being well fed and they're being fairly well reared. The mother's de- de- dewormed, the mother's well fed. In other words, providing their immune systems are of a good status, they will fight it off. Okay, so when you're saying it's not really an influenza as such, yeah. but does that mean then you can give them antibiotics? Um, you can give them antibiotics because that helps with the mucky eyes. And the yes, noses the infection and there. All the rest so of it, yes, the infection that's there. Antibiotics do help. We generally do give them a little bit of amoxicillin. Yes, for which a few is days. the go-to, isn't it? It's the go-to. Yeah. It is the go-to. And you might give them a sh- little shot of B12, and you just make sure that their nutrition is good, and that they're well fed, and they will generally fight it off. Very, very immuno poor, immunosuppressed. If the mother is one of these cat flu carriers yeah. and is constantly being get, getting herself sick with it, perhaps through never having been vaccinated herself, if they're born with a bad dose of it, they're immunocompromised, they often don't fully recover. Yeah. And you get these kittens with the really bad eyes, they might have corneal ulcers, they might have um, ulceration around the nose and around the eyes, and they're immunocompromised. Oh, unfortunately, some of those kittens never shake it off might result in having to be put to sleep I've even seen cases where kittens have lost an eye yeah from bad cases of it okay Good it's stuff nasty okay right uh, Barbara was on she's out in Kilcock at the moment she said we lost a cat about four years ago back due to kidney disease our next cat start getting the symptoms but this time we were able to get it in time and sort it uh, her full her fur changed colour uh, as well and she lost a bit of muscle we were told by the vet at the time we caught it early and now still under medication yeah very good and the management of that usually involves changing their diet right. because they're prone to they, they're sensitive their kidneys they, thereafter are sensitive to different salts okay. and sugars and proteins so you usually feed them a kind of a, a renal diet as it's caused which is a low salt diet mm. and the risk of them developing crystals and the risk of them getting the, 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 the awful alkali lesions on the kidneys. The risk is minimised with the correct diet that's lower protein and lower salts. OK. Uh, Margaret was on. She says, uh, we feed our cat dry food all the time. Occasionally we give her a little treat here and there. We do sometimes give her some scraps off the table at the end of a meal, obviously, but not every day, but every few days. Not a hell of a lot. Is this OK to do? Sounds fine. That's a well-fed, well 
well-minded, well-managed cat. Yeah. And as long as she... One of the things that predisposes them to kidney disease, incidentally as well, apart from the congenital aspect of it is, stress can be a big factor. Cats internalise stress and it can make them sick, make them ill. Yeah. But if a cat has a lovely routine and a nice balanced lifestyle in a home. They don't, generally speaking, they don't do well in multi-cat households. They often don't do as well in households with lots of cats, very busy households, or where there's a lot of disruption. They do, they are solitary. They mostly, this is generalising, of course, but they do prefer to be by themselves yeah. and, and have a nice routine and a nice calm life. So controlling stress can also help prevent kidney disease. Okay, right. One final question, doggy question. It says, hi guys, um, my question is related to my dog. He has a little cluster of small lumps on his head next to his ear. He shakes his head sometimes. I've been cleaning it with diluted Dettol. Any ideas what it could be? Says so a different Margaret. Yeah, those are polyps in his ears. Uh, as a secondary, those little growths have, have, have arisen as a result of inflammation inside the ear canal. Does that's thickening an inflammation of the cartilage in front of the ear? It sounds to me like that lady is describing ear polyps, as I say, as a result of inflammation and thickening of the cartilage. And that little dog probably does have a deep-seated otitis and a thickening and an irritation, inflammation in the ear canal. I would visit your local vet, have that looked at, have that treated. Um, and I wouldn't clean it with Dettol. Dettol would be an irritant. Okay. It wouldn't be useful to put in the ear. Okay, good good, good advice there as well. So make sure you, you get get in touch with, the, with your local vet if it doesn't clear up or take Des's advice there. Don't use the Dettol. So, is there any alternative in the interim? Um, yeah, um, you can buy a routine ear cleaner over the counter either in the vets or a, or a pet shop and it might help a little until you get a chance for the vet to Take have a, a look. look. Have a look. Okay, well done. And of course, uh, we're back again next week. This episode will go up on podcast later on this afternoon. And if you want to get in touch with Des down at his surgery, you can. Yeah, at petslife.ie. At petslife.ie. Go for it from there. Have a good one, Des. It's a pet's life with Jim Dog, Ireland's first pet resort by Des the Vet, managed by vets, loved by pets. Daycare, vet care, premium pet food and grooming. Visit at petslife.ie.